So thank you very much for uh, having invited me. Uh, I'm really honored by that. And uh, they asked me to talk about hemostatic agents. Um, a lot, many of us already know uh, many of those agents, and they use them, uh, uh, some of them very uh, commonly, and some of them uh, more rarely. Now we will see uh, those agents. Uh, one thing which is a major um, I want to skip those. We already went through those uh, little def definitions. Uh, but uh, one thing which is very important in this is that the preoperative evaluation, uh, knowing the story of the patient, knowing if she has any uh, bleeding disorders, knowing if she's taking any uh, medications which interfere with uh, coagulation, um, uh, antiplatelets agents, aspirin, whatever, uh, we need to know all that and uh, try to uh, take all preventive measures uh, in order to prevent what, you, what, what, what will happen uh, later on. Uh, um, first of all, we need to know that all those uh, hemostatic agents uh, shouldn't be considered as the uh, primary treatment for the uh, surgical hemorrhage. Uh, first of all, we need to know that uh, it is mostly the surgical techniques that should take care of the major part of the, uh, of the bleeding and uh, all those uh, agents that I'm going to enumerate should be uh, thought about as adjunct uh, to uh, our surgical uh, management of the, uh, uh, of the surgical bleeding. Um, uh, uh, one second thought is that we need also, and we already mentioned it, is the um, uh, DIC that comes with, uh, with a major bleed. And as we were already uh, saying that whenever this happens, uh, the best of the surgeons uh, would look like uh, uh, a medical student or uh, during the surgery. So it's very important to be ahead of the game and prevent the occurrence of, uh, of those things. Uh, now I try to... Uh, um, uh, like uh, divide all those uh, um, hemostatic agents in, uh, in functional groups uh, to how they work. So uh, basically, I will uh, first talk about uh, topical agents, uh, um, the physical uh, agents, then the biological active, active agents, and then I will move to uh, systemic agents, basically talk about uh, tranexamic acid and the um, uh, 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 factor 7a, the recombinant factor 7. So uh, basically let us start uh, very fast with the um, uh, uh, physical agents, um, uh, bone wax um, um, uh, or, or the wax based, uh, like, like the bone wax is mostly uh, used whenever we have uh, some uh, 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 bony uh, lesions mostly um, uh, retropubic or the uh, uh, promontory or, or we are moving some uh, 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 tumors or whatever and then we, uh, we, we, we scrape those uh, um, bony areas and we all know that this bleeding that's coming from that um, uh, area is very difficult to, uh, to hold and this wax is exactly like, like a wax, like its name. Uh, and we just uh, put it uh, on that area and we need to make sure that we are applying it on it and then uh, remove what's excedent uh, from it. So we, we do have, uh, as I mentioned, uh, um, uh, two, two, two types. One is the bee wax itself, which is not resorbable. And because it is not resorbable, it can interfere uh, sometimes with the bone healing and may cause uh, infection uh, in that area. Uh, the other type is a wax-like, uh, water-soluble and resorbable. 
and uh, that um, um, would uh, uh, give a better bone healing and the uh, incidence of infection is, uh, is not uh, like the previous one. Uh, and there is this um, um, a bone putty, which is a granular hydroxyapatite, and it's water-soluble, and then we can uh, put on that area with a syringe, as I um, uh, show it here. Uh, basically, those are very rarely used because we do not often get those uh, um, bony uh, lesions or, or bleeding, but whenever it happens, I think those are the uh, only way where we can really get hold of, of this type of bleeding. Uh, the matrix type, uh, dry matrix, those are the most commonly used and easy to apply agents. Um, it's a matrix which activates coagulation factors and facilitate the thrombus formation. That means the thrombus will um, uh, form on that matrix and which will uh, lead to the um, uh, hemostasis uh, uh, to be adequate. Of course, it is less uh, efficient with heavy bleeding. Uh, heavy bleeding would need surgical techniques in order to uh, uh, control it. Uh, usually, uh, we, we need to apply it with a gentle pressure using a wet sponge uh, over the bleeding surface. And with those things, make sure that uh, when uh, we finish from applying it and uh, removing our pressure, uh, try as much as possible not to remove the agent with it because then you will lose your uh, coagulation effect over them. Uh, what are those? Uh, first of all, I will uh, talk about the oxidized regenerated cellulose, which we all uh, are familiar with. The uh, surgery cell um, uh, group, we have the uh, surgery cell, uh, um, um, we have the um, uh, surgery snow, uh, we have the fibrillar, uh, all from this uh, surgery cell uh, um, uh, company. Um, it's uh, from a plant, it's resorbable in two weeks, pliable sheets that can be used also with laparoscopy. And uh, this image that I showed, like we cut those um, uh, fabrics like with uh, narrow lamels that we can uh, push inside a uh, laparoscopy procedures. Um, it, it has a low pH and in, uh, um, in vitro uh, experiments uh, showed that uh, it has a bactericidal uh, effect against some gram-positive and gram-negative uh, organisms. Um, uh, just uh, pay attention to sometimes when we are overwhelmed with uh, bleeding, oozing, whatever, we tend to put uh, 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 big quantities of those um, uh, elements, and uh, it has been found that uh, this uh, uh, quantity of residual um, uh, surgery cell sheets there is associated with increased infection and uh, adhesions. So put the layer as much as uh, we need but not exceed so that we do not have uh, residual um, uh, fabrics there that would stay and contribute to increased infections. Uh, the dry gelatin matrix, we all know uh, uh, about the uh, gel form for example. Uh, it's made from a partial hydrolysis of uh, porcine collagen. Uh, it looks like a piece of foam. Uh, uh, we do have also a powder uh, like it or small balls, but usually what we use in our surgical setting is mostly the, the what, what looks like a piece of foam. Uh, it's absorbable uh, in uh, six weeks and it has a particularity is that it absorbs uh, big amounts of fluid and uh, we need to know that it also can expand. And uh, because of this uh, factor that it can expand, um, uh, we, we, we would um, um, uh, not use it in small tiny areas where the expansion can uh, compress some other organs that we do not want them to compress. 
Um, it happens rarely in our pelvic areas, but in some other specialties, uh, in some areas, they cannot use this because of this uh, particularity of expansion of, of uh, this product. Some uh, times also we uh, use it uh, uh, mixed uh, with a, um, um, a topical thrombin solution, and that has been uh, proven to increase the efficacy uh, of this uh, agent. And also, like <coughs> the surgery cell, <coughs> uh, uh, big amounts of, uh, <coughs> of uh, gel foam, residual gel foam, uh, may lead also to uh, increased infection, granuloma, and fibrosis. Uh, uh, the other matrix, uh, the avitin or the microfibrillar collagen, um, it's an acid salt from bovine collagen. It's also absorbable over uh, around eight weeks. Uh, most importantly is that in a patient which is heparinized, uh, it is still effective, but patients who are thrombocytopenic seems not uh, uh, to, uh, it seems not to be uh, very effective in patients who have uh, thrombocytopenia. So, uh, few studies have shown that it is uh, more effective uh, in controlling uh, or, or making a thrombus uh, more effective than the uh, surgery cell. Um, uh, and it's very important we heard about uh, using cell savers. If we are using cell savers, we shouldn't be using uh, this microfibrillar collagen, which would uh, uh, do, w w which would provoke uh, some uh, uh, embolism. Uh, Micropores uh, polysaccharide spheres. Arista, uh, this uh, comes from potato starch, uh, and the way it works is that it will create some, like, uh, equivalent to a dehydration. It will absorb uh, the water, and by this fact, it would concentrate uh, coagulation uh, factors and uh, platelets, and this is how uh, it will work on creating the, uh, the thrombus. It would absorb in about uh, two days, um, rarely associated with uh, infections, and this product uh, can be used with cell, uh, with cell savers uh, if that cell saver have the adequate filter to block this uh, agent. Now, uh, turn on to the biological active um, agents. Um, uh, we'll start to talk about the uh, topical thrombin. And uh, once we reach those agents, uh, we need to know that those agents are much more expensive than the previous uh, agents. Uh, but many studies have shown that they are more effective than the previous agents. Uh, so the uh, uh, thrombin, uh, I'm talking here uh, about the topical thrombin, but we will uh, uh, talk later about also a combination of the thrombin with some other agents. Now this is only the thrombin. Um, uh, it's a solution reconstituted from leophilized uh, powder. Uh, as I said previously, can be used uh, on a gelatin matrix like the, the gel foam. And once applied over the gel foam, it has been shown to be uh, more effective uh, as a um, uh, to, to control uh, bleeding. Uh, now uh, we do have the bovine uh, uh, thrombin, the pooled human thrombin, and more recently the uh, recombinant uh, thrombin. Um, uh, more and more now we are using the uh, recombinant and the bovine are being used uh, less and less. Uh, the bovine, uh, they are the, uh, all um, uh, bovine and the uh, uh, pulled human uh, thrombin are derived from plasma, and of course the recombinant uh, is not. Uh, uh, as adverse uh, uh, events with those with, with this thrombin 
when it is uh, bovine, the most important thing to think about is the um, uh, 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 the immune coagulopathy that uh, could be caused by the bovine thrombin, uh, and the, uh, the way we uh, uh, it causes it, it's because there are some uh, uh, bovine factor five, uh, which uh, would trigger the formation of some antibodies, and those antibodies would interfere with the uh, with the patient uh, uh, factor five and they therefore uh, create this uh, uh, immune problem. Uh, we, uh, but as I say, we are shying more and more uh, from this product, uh, and we are using more and more the human, and now more recently the recombinant, which do not have uh, those uh, adverse effects. Um, uh, the human, obviously, it, it, there is a little chance because it's, uh, the source is a human where we can have some uh, blood-borne infections, uh, rare, but we need to think about it. And the uh, recombinant, which uh, the only problem is that if a patient has an allergy to uh, that product. Uh, the other is the uh, 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 fibrin sealant. Uh, the febrin sealants are a uh, combination of those uh, two products. It's a um, combination of uh, thrombin with fibrinogen. <clears throat> and in some uh, commercial um, uh, or uh, industry uh, products, sometimes it is mixed with an uh, antifibrinolytic agent. Um, uh, and as we, uh, we move more and more, uh, those are products which are more and more expensive. So it's uh, used as uh, hemostatic, tissue sealant, and tissue adhesive. Um, they stimulate the final uh, stage of the clotting cascade. And uh, when they are mixed together, those two products, they create an uh, impermeable fibrin clot, uh, which is quickly formed. Um, so again, uh, the thrombin counterpart uh, could be the bovine, the human, or the recombinant. And we do have, like the, in the industry, we do have uh, all those brands. And the fibrinogen, uh, we uh, uh, could have either um, uh, a recombinant uh, fibrinogen, uh, which is the newest under evaluation. Um, uh, it is still not uh, available uh, in the industry yet. It's still under study, but we hope that it would come recently, so it will be a recombinant. But mostly what we have in the, uh, uh, in the industry is the uh, uh, human fibrinogen, uh, which is mixed with the uh, thrombin. And uh, uh, the other um, uh, aspect of those fibrin sealants is that uh, in the package we would have the thrombin and we need to have an autologous uh, fibrinogen, uh, either from uh, the, the patient's plasma. Uh, so there are some uh, uh, commercial kits to do that. Uh, some of them are small kits, some of them are really big machines. And uh, this is where we would form the fibrinogen uh, from the patient and the thrombin from uh, the, uh, the products and uh, those would be mixed together. And once mixed together, uh, uh, it could be used and applied uh, in the patients. So uh, whenever uh, it is um, uh, human, then Again, we have the same uh, issue of thinking about the uh, bloodborne infection. And uh, if it is bovine, again, the IMC um, and the allergic reaction. So it's a, almost we need to think about it with the same way as we thought about uh, the uh, thrombin. Um, yeah, those are some of the machines that we can get for, for those uh, <clears throat> fibrin sealants, and uh, very interesting to see uh, 
this one, uh, how uh, it can make really a seal. Now I'll move to the systemic agents that um, uh, we can use. Um, um, antifibrinolytic. Um, uh, first thing is uh, the um, um, the cyclocapron or the uh, tranexamic acid use, uh, which has gained lots of momentum. And talking about the study, uh, CRASH-2 study, a huge randomized control uh, study involving over 20,000 patients, uh, multi-center, multi-country, uh, uh, blinded, and uh, uh, what what was used was tranexamic acid, one gram intravenously within 10 minutes, followed by one gram perfusion over eight hours. But in this study, uh, this was used uh, in patients uh, uh, with uh, trauma associated with significant uh, hemorrhage. And this is like about uh, 10 years ago. And what was seen what they noticed uh, in this study, we can uh, look at the uh, area within the uh, red uh, circle, uh, that um, when this was used in the first hour, the um, uh, mortality from hemorrhage uh, uh, compared to the placebo, uh, relative risk 0.68. So that's a uh, tremendous um, uh, decrease in uh, mortality rate from hemorrhage. And we can see when we, uh, we see when this was given after three hours, it was still effective, but the relative risk was higher. So the effectiveness was lower. And in their uh, study, uh, they noticed that if it was given beyond the three hours, uh, then uh, there was uh, no efficacy, even a trend maybe that it, it made things worse. So, uh, but very important thing in this study, although we, they have showed that it worked in controlling uh, hemorrhage, uh, but there was no difference in thrombotic events whether DVTs, uh, pulmonary embolisms, or uh, myocardial infarctions. So th those, uh, this study was like about uh, 2010, 2011. Um, actually, uh, uh, there have been uh, the initial publication of the CRASH-2. Uh, the initial publication, they only um, uh, uh, calculated the uh, mortality from hemorrhage um, when the tranexamic acid was given within eight hours. And there, at that time, the relative risk was 0 0.85. So it did decrease mortality from hemorrhage, but at a um, uh, lesser effect. But then they did a follow-up from that study. They took the same patient. They calculated um, the um, uh, mortality from hemorrhage uh, in the patients that received the tranexamic acid within the first hour, uh, then within the three hours, and then more than three hours. And this is where they found a major and significant uh, differences. So tranex uh, tranexamic acid works, but it works if it is given uh, earlier rather than later. Um, following that, we have the woman trial which also appeared in uh, Lancet uh, last year. And this was also a major uh, randomized control trial, also involving about uh, 20,000 patients, uh, multi-center, multi-country, uh, uh, blinded also, uh, placebo controlled. And they gave the tranexamic acid one gram IV uh, which was repeated after 24 hours if uh, it didn't work. So what they found, again, uh, this is the uh, women's trial, mortality from hemorrhage. Um, uh, 
the um, uh, relative risk of uh, mortality from hemorrhage when uh, the tranexamic acid was given within three hours, uh, it was 0 0.69. And uh, the figure that we have from that trial, when it was overall like uh, given at any time, it was 0 0.81. So they concluded that tranexamic acid works it decreases mortality from hemorrhage, but again, if it is given within three hours, the efficacy will be uh, much more. But uh, unlike the initial uh, crash uh, trial, uh, they didn't mention not to give it uh, after the three hours. In, in, uh, in this one, um, this is mortality from hemorrhage uh, from obstetrical reasons. So, uh, tranex tranexamic acid works and uh, actually it is one of our uh, uh, one of the changing guidelines that we need to think about now with uh, obstetrical or gynecological hemorrhage uh, the last thing the recombinant uh, factor 7a uh, we already uh, talked a little bit about it and how did it come uh, to be used? Um, uh, recombinant uh, factor 7A is used uh, and it is uh, FDA approved for hemophiliacs and um, mostly hemophiliacs who have antibodies. But uh, there was um, a, um, uh, a study that appeared, a case uh, study, where uh, um, a guy with a gunshot wound um, uh, who became coagulopathic, uh, all usual measures failed to control bleeding, and then that guy received recombinant factor 7A as a last resort and uh, nearly miraculous recovery, and that was the conclusion of that case report. And um, in fact, uh, and that was like in 1999, and uh, this case happened in a country not very far. Actually, this comes from Israel. So following that, uh, people uh, were encouraged to, do, to use um, uh, recombinant factor 7A uh, uh, more and more uh, in um, uh, situations uh, with hemorrhage and mostly coagulopathic hemorrhage. And although uh, it is not FDA approved for that, but it's being used more and more in other situations other than hemophiliacs or Glanzmann's disease. So uh, it is produced by a transfection of the human factor 7 into cultured hamster cells. So it's a culture. Uh, recombinant factor 7A uh, binds to the surface of activated platelets, and this is where the coagulation starts, and it's not a uh, tissue factor, it's only the surface of the platelets uh, that promotes the factor 10 activation and thrombin generation. Um, we say it's a bypassing agent because um, uh, whatever uh, deficiencies there are in the coagulation uh, tree, uh, uh, above the factor 10, um, uh, it will bypass that because it, it, it's going to start the um, uh, coagulation from that level uh, downward. As I said, uh, it is FDA approved for hemophilia with inhibitors and factor 7 deficiency. However, the off-label use of this recombinant factor 7A uh, account for more than 90% of its utilization. So uh, out of 10 prescriptions of recombinant factor 7, only one of them is FDA approved and the nine others are non-FDA approved, uh, off-label. So um, uh, how we use it? Life-threatening coagulopathic hemorrhage when all other means have failed. Um, uh, we do have concerns because of the FDA approvals, so use it only the same as last resort. Um, uh, also, uh, although uh, the recommended dose by the manufacturer is 90 microgram per kilogram of body weight, uh, however, 
because we do not have real studies about how much we need to use this factor uh, in uh, particular situations. Uh, when we read about it, we see uh, people who have used it anyway between 50 and 120 uh, micrograms uh, per kilogram. Half-life is two to three hours, but uh, as I noted, um, the more I'm advancing in my talk, the more uh, those agents are becoming expensive, and this one would cost, one dose would cost about $5,000 uh, for a, an average built uh, person. So with this, uh, this is the last thing that we have in our hemostatic agents. Uh, any questions? Oh, uh, last slide, efficacy. Yes, before that. <laughs> um, study with efficacy uh, and safety of this product. Uh, efficacy, uh, this is a um, uh, meta-analysis of uh, randomized controlled trials and uh, it reduced uh, the risk of receiving blood, uh, of receiving blood transfusions, zero, uh, odd ratios 0 0.29, safety, no significant difference in thromboembolic complications, as I said because it is, doesn't work on the tissue factor. It works only on the surface of the platelets uh, and no complications, uh, no difference in mortality rate. So its main difference is uh, uh, decreasing the amount of transfusion. And I think I finished now. Thank you.